Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Write a College Essay That Stands Out. So my name is Marla Ross. I'm a staff member here at QuestBridge, and I also happen to be a QuestBridge alum and former college prep scholar as well. So it's great to be here presenting to you all from the other side, having gone through this process some time ago. So let's briefly go over what we'll be covering today. We'll start with an overview of the prompts and highlight a few key elements then we'll brainstorm an essay together and develop an outline. After that, we'll discuss some tips when drafting your essay and test your knowledge a bit on what we've covered. And finally, we'll discuss a few resources available to you. Let's talk about the essay prompts first. There are two essays in the National College Match application. Essay two is a topical essay where you must choose one of the prompts listed here. You can find these prompts at the top of the Essay 2 section in your application. It could be a good idea to do some brainstorming for each topic before selecting the strongest option. But for today, we're going to focus on Essay 1. Essay 1 is your personal essay. The essay prompt is, we are interested in learning more about the context in which you have grown up, formed your aspirations, and accomplished your successes. Please describe how the most influential factors and challenges in your life have shaped you into the person you are today. There are a few things about the prompt I'd like to point out before we move on. First, the essay has a word limit of 800 words, so keep that in mind as you're writing it. If you had a College Prep Scholars application, please note the increase in the word limit. Please make sure that you're taking advantage of this extra space. I also recommend using a word check function on whatever outside document you're using to draft and edit your essay. It's a good way to stay on track, and that way you won't end up copying and pasting your essay into the application just to find out it's way too long. Remember that this is a personal essay, so it should be about you. It's okay to include others, but ultimately the focus should be on you, which we'll talk about later. And there are a couple different pieces to this prompt. But I want to highlight that not only do we want you to include factors and challenges that have influenced you, but more importantly, how these have shaped you into who you are today. So that's going to be something we'll really be focusing on in today's webinar. All right, let's jump into our brainstorming and outlining activity. So go ahead in the description, you'll find a worksheet uh, it should be linked in that description. You can click on it. It should open into a new tab. Uh, you can edit it directly in that tab or you can download it and edit it. Um, so go ahead and do that right now so that you can follow along and start brainstorming for your own essay as we go through the webinar. Uh, if you can't download it for whatever reason, don't worry. You can find it in our Student Resource Center on the Writing Essays page, uh, which I'll show you how to navigate to later. So let's begin with an example. So for the purpose of this webinar, let's pretend that I'm the example student writing an essay. So I'll begin by thinking of a broad topic that immediately comes to mind when I'm thinking which parts of my life I believe have been particularly influential. Let's say for this example that I write down family. So that's a really broad topic. Again, we're starting with something very general here. So I would need to specify a little bit more. In the box below, I specify a circumstance, which is that I live in a single parent household. But this is still a very general idea, and at this point, I need to find specific examples to really make my unique story about being from a single parent household shine through. So remember, we want students to respond to the entire prompt. So by discussing how these factors and challenges challenges helped me grow, I'm able to go into greater detail about my circumstances and really hone in on my unique point. Maybe I want to say that living in a single parent household has given me greater independence because my mom has to work long hours. And because of this, I had to learn how to cook for myself and my siblings with a limited budget. So I write those down as my unique points in this box here. All right, so take a moment to pause and think. So far, we've talked about family, but what other broad topics do you feel you could write your essay on? I'm going to pause for just a moment, give you some time uh, just to think about, just write down a few ideas. These don't have to be the ideas you stick with, uh, but just to give yourself a starting point.
All right, let's keep going. So let's say as a part of my brainstorming process, I've selected community and academics as two broad topics. They're both topics that I could delve deeper into to talk about factors that have influenced me personally. So let's say as the example student, my community is a general factor that has been influential to me, particularly the fact that it has a large immigrant population is something that, that has been very significant. Now again, that's still very general and many students may write about their diverse communities being an influential factor in their lives. So how can I get more specific about how I personally was able to grow from this factor and how my community shaped me? On the screen are three options, points that I might include as the writer. So take a moment to think which one, assuming that they're all true, would be a good and specific unique point to ensure that I'm illustrating my story and standing out from the crowd. I'm gonna go ahead and pause just for a moment so you can think of what your response may be. Okay, so the most unique point here is B, appreciating the Korean supermarkets in the area. Although learning the importance of diversity and learning about other cultures may be broad takeaways from my essay, they aren't necessarily points that are unique to my specific story. So remember, your unique point should be highly specific to your story. That's how your essay can stand out from others that may have a very similar broad topic. So I have the third broad topic of academics, but I'll give you a little bit of time to think of your own third broad topic then go ahead and fill out your specific circumstance as it relates to your broad topic on your worksheet. Okay, great. Hopefully you've thought of a circumstance there. Um, so now take some time just to think about the how. So what are some unique points and stories that will help your writing stand out and be specific? So just jot down a few bullet points of details about this circumstance that could illustrate your story and make it unique. If you think your broad topic is a common one that a lot of other students may easily write about, then it's particularly important to hone in on these key details that allow you to make a unique point. So I'm gonna pause again um, and go ahead and jot down those unique points that you've thought of. All right. Let's move on. So just because we've given you three separate columns to brainstorm three separate topics, it doesn't mean you can only write about one topic in your essay. You can absolutely include several different topics in your essay as long as they all tie together. And we'll take a look at what that might mean in just a moment. Uh, but for now, let's focus on one topic. So let's decide that out of these three topics of family, community, and academics, I select family as the topic that I want to expand upon for my personal essay. It may be useful to think of a common thread that ties the different ideas of my brainstorming and essay draft together. Brainstorming beforehand to really hone in on key details that you want to include will help avoid later confusion and frustration as you're actually drafting your essay. So I see a common thread here, which is resourcefulness. This means that everything I write about will somehow relate to my resourcefulness within the context of my family and my household. So what's an intuitive way to write about all this? In the first paragraph, let's say I introduce my family, my siblings, and my family situation. In the second paragraph, I hone in on the great responsibility of buying food for my siblings with only $20. In the third paragraph, I show my growth and the fact that I've perfected the art of cooking entire meals with only $20. There's a common thread in this essay that I am resourceful. This is the key theme that I want the reader to take away from this essay that's not already present in other sections of my application. Paragraph one sets the backdrop for the student in this example to be resourceful. Paragraph two presents the opportunity. And paragraph three details when and how the student demonstrated resourcefulness. I don't include every single detail about my life, or even about the circumstance in this example, but by having a common thread to focus on, I am writing a coherent and unique essay. 
Now I'm going to take a look at my brainstorming worksheet and see if there's anything I could integrate into my essay about my resourcefulness as a family member, which again, in answering the prompt, is something that has influenced or shaped me. In some cases, you may want to discuss more than one factor or challenge that has influenced you. So let's look at the other two columns I have written here within community and academics. So maybe I want to discuss both my family and my community. In order to outline it in a way that would create a cohesive story, it's important that I find that common thread that we talked about earlier that'll tie all of these different ideas together. So in this case, I expand the common thread of resourcefulness by adding the detail that I am particularly resourceful in cooking for others, whether it's at home cooking meals for my siblings or my use of Korean spices and ingredients in volunteering to cook for festivities. So how would I go about the outlining process? Let's integrate some more brainstorming pieces into my outline talking about my family. Now that I want to incorporate details about my community, I added these key details. So now you see that I have incorporated details from both my family section as well as my community section to really draw out my resourcefulness in cooking for others and my appreciation of Korean food. This is just a quick example of how, even if you want to cover multiple factors or challenges in your essay, you should still make sure that they are tied together with a common thread and can tell your story in a coherent manner. Now let's switch gears and cover some general drafting tips you can use when drafting your own essay. The first tip is to show, don't tell. I'm sure many of you have heard this phrase before, and it's key here. Make sure you're adding descriptive details to really bring your story to life. The second tip is to focus on you. It's great to include or mention others in your essay, but the main focus should always circle back to you. And finally, the third tip is to remain positive. It's okay to talk about challenges, but when doing so, make sure to frame them in a way that demonstrates resilience or growth. Now we'll go through each of these tips and discuss a couple of examples, starting with the first one. Example A says, my mother works long hours to provide for me and my siblings. She does not come home until midnight. As the eldest, I am in charge of cooking meals for my brothers and sisters. It was hard at first, but eventually I found ways to cook meals on a budget. The key was using flavorful spices to create great dishes. From this experience, I learned how to be resourceful. As you can see here, this example doesn't offer many details. So let's look at example B. There is something therapeutic about the smell of spices sauteing in a pan of caramelizing onions. Nothing is more relaxing after a long day at school than standing over the stove, gently coaxing these ingredients. In 30 minutes and for only $20, I have a delicious dinner prepared for me and my four siblings. There is always enough left when my mother returns home from her 12 hour shift at the hospital. As you can probably tell, example B gives more detail and description and it uses the senses to overall paint a picture that's stronger than in, in example A. All right, so now we're gonna quickly test your knowledge on what we just discussed and see how these two examples compare. Take a minute to read over these responses, looking for which one uses greater detail. Jot down which example you believe offers greater detail of these two. The correct answer is A, because it has concrete details that paint a picture of the applicant's life and reveal compelling details about their character. In example B, the applicant tells the reader that they have a strong work ethic, whereas in example A, the applicant shows the reader that they have a strong work ethic through a story. Now let's take a look at an example of the second drafting tip, focusing on you. My mother's hands never shake. Even when she is troubled, she never shows it. Once, when she received the phone call about my grandfather's death, her face distorted, her lips quivered, and tears streamed down her face. But her hands remained still, holding on to the vessel that delivered the bad news. That's the trait of a good nurse. 
Example A has a great use of detail, but the focus is on the mother, not the applicant. Let's see how example B compares. They say I am the best test taker at school. My hands never shake under pressure. My mind could be racing, struggling to find the next ideas for a timed essay, but my hands follow my thoughts calmly, leading a string of perfect handwriting. This is because I'm the daughter of a nurse, trained never to show a sign of uncertainty. Thanks to my mom, I have been able to apply this skill at school. In example B, there is a great use of detail and the focus is on the applicant, so it makes for a stronger essay. Now go ahead and read the answers for A, B, and C, and again, jot down which responses you believe focus on the student. So example A really only discusses the applicant's father, whereas essay B and C mention the father, but turn the focus back to the applicant. While C has a slightly stronger focus on the applicant, I would say both B and C are ultimately focused on the applicant. All right, now let's look at the third and final tip, remaining positive. You're not my mother, my sister yells at me as she avoids the spoonful of chicken soup I attempt to feed her. She is sick. She feels burning hot, but she's right. I, in my torn skinny jeans and checkered band sneakers, am not her mother. But for the past five years, ever since our mom took longer shifts at the hospital, a parental role was forced upon me that made me say goodbye to my childhood. So here you can see that the last sentence in this example gives a resentful tone to the writer's experience which is something you want to avoid when writing a personal essay. Let's look at a different version in example B. You're not my mother, my sister yells at me as she avoids the spoonful of chicken soup I attempt to feed her. She is sick, she feels burning hot, but she is right. I, in my torn skinny jeans and checkered van sneakers, am not her mother. But for the past five years, ever since our mom took longer shifts at the hospital, I stepped into a parental role that I might not have asked for, but am slowly growing into. So here, the writer reframes the experience to be one of growth. It may be difficult to reframe certain challenges or experiences in a way that demonstrates growth or resilience, in which case it may be a good idea to select a different topic or challenge to discuss here. All right, let's test your knowledge one more time. Go ahead and read the examples below and decide which one you feel demonstrates positivity. So, similar to the examples we looked at before, both versions start out the same and present the same challenge faced by the student, but the way the student frames them in the last one to two sentences is different. Example A offers a positive outlook, whereas Example B has a more negative one. So you can certainly talk about an experience that's been negative, such as a lack of transportation and a long commute, and you can be honest too. In both examples, the writer states, this is particularly difficult on days I want to stay after school, but cannot. The writer isn't concealing their feelings there, but they also share a positive experience that's come of it, rather than just focusing on the negative, however valid it may be. So you certainly don't have to portray your experiences as something they are not. However, there's often a way to share difficult circumstances and even negative feelings in a positive way or a way that demonstrates personal growth or resilience. Now we're gonna cover some resources and review the upcoming timeline. You can find more specific resources, including additional essay examples and grammar tips in our Student Resource Center, which I'll show you how to navigate to on my screen. All right, so to find the Student Resource Center, go ahead and go to our website, questbridge.org. Then on the menu, you'll go to the left-hand side where it says high school students. Hover over that, you'll see a couple different sections pop up. Go to the far right where it says Student Resource Center. Go to Applying for College and click that link. And it'll take you to an overview page with several different categories you can navigate to. 
including the writing essays one, which you can find toward the bottom of the page. Now, before I cover some other resources that are available to you, let's just cover a few quick tips for improving your draft once you've finished your first draft. The first is to proofread. A great way to do this is to read your essay out loud to help you determine the flow and catch any grammatical mistakes. The second is to get a second opinion. So you can ask a trusted mentor, such as a teacher um, or a friend, to read your essay and offer feedback. This is a great, great way to get an outside perspective on what you've written. The last one is to incorporate that feedback. So take a second look at your essay after you've received feedback and use anything, any notes that you've been given to improve upon your first draft. Keeping in mind, right, that you do not have to include every single thing that someone recommends or comments. This is ultimately, you want it to be in your voice and to be your writing, um, but this is a great way maybe to catch some areas of flow or where things don't make sense to outside readers. Now, looking at the Student Resource Center that we just navigated to, um, in the Writing Essays section of the Student Resource Center, Center, you'll find a section on writing through a low-income lens, which mentions how to write about difficult circumstances and being mindful of tone and topic choice. Some extenuating circumstances that you could include could be significant responsibilities in your household, such as providing care for a family member, babysitting siblings, or preparing family meals. Um, if you've been in foster care, experienced homeless, homelessness, or been in other temporary housing situations, those are things you could include. Uh, an unusually long commute to attend school in another district. Uh, family or your community being unsupportive of some educational goals. Uh, obstacles if English is not your first language. These kind of circumstances help application readers understand the full context of your successes and academic accomplishments. However, remember that these are just a few examples and you don't have to write about these extenuating circumstances in your essay if it doesn't align with your broad topic. The reader can always glean family responsibilities or other extenuating circumstances through other sections of your application. And since we read applications holistically, your entire application plays a role in telling your story, not just your essay. Another important section that we encourage you to check out is the detailed FAQ section, which is broken up into three parts, mechanics, structure, and content. Lastly, another resource we recommend is to check out our Quest Tips video. There's one specifically on the writing section for your short answers and essays, um, and you can find more practical assistance here uh, I look into some of the more technical parts of the application if you're having questions uh, or difficulties with that. So here's a quick timeline refresher of the National College Match. The application opens in early August and is due in late September. Applicants will find out in mid-October if they've been selected as a finalist, which is around the same time they will rank colleges. Early December is when Match Scholarship recipients are notified. They are not selected as a match scholarship recipient. Finalists can still participate in QuestBridge regular decision and apply to any of our college partners for free. Spring of their senior year is when they would find out where they've been accepted and begin their journey as a QuestBridge scholar. Lastly, here are some helpful video resources that you can use uh, when you're working on your application. So on-demand webinars, including this one, uh, you can find on our YouTube channel by visiting youtube.com slash questbridge and going to the playlist section. In this playlist, you'll find a webinar with tips for selecting recommenders and requesting recommendations, today's webinar on the do's and don'ts of essay writing, and a behind the scenes where Questbridge staff share tips for how you can make each section of your application shine. Another great resource available on our YouTube channel are our Quest Tips videos, which provide step-by-step -step instructions highlights of important reminders, and common technical issues for various parts of the application. If you haven't already, make sure to start an application for the National College Match. 